like about getting on the ice uh, on a morning like today? I think just get the get woken up a little bit. I mean, obviously some guys take the optional, and you know, if I wasn't a rookie, maybe I'd take a couple more optional than I want. But uh, yeah, you just get get a feel for the puck and kind of get focused for the game. How, do, how does the hierarchy work on that? Like, when you feel comfortable that maybe you don't have to take the optional anymore? Uh, maybe when you're not the young guy, I don't know. Maybe we'll see how it is next season. Maybe maybe I'll try it, but. Uh, I think it's more if you don't get chirped after, then you're good. But uh, I'm not really to, really to take that chance. So, What sort of game are you expecting tonight? Uh, like a playoff style game. Obviously, Detroit's fighting for a playoff spot. And, uh, you know, we want to – I think it's good for us to kind of get that mentality right away in a playoff game. So I look forward to planning tonight and hopefully get a win in our last regular season home game. Is it like going up against Patrick Kane? Uh, it's amazing. I mean, obviously, childhood, all the, you know, best play, one of the best players in the league. And, um, so it's special to play many good players and play him. It's uh, again it's special. I'm used to seeing him in a Chicago uniform, and Detroit's a little different. But uh, yeah, he's a great guy to play against. Favorite moment of his career? Uh, I think his overtime winner um, when he slid across the ice, punching, punching through the wall, whatever that celebration. That was. I remember watching that live. That was pretty cool. The heartbreaker. Yeah, yeah, that was my favorite one for him. Cool. How will you? I mean, we're still in the middle of it with Austin's run. But what will your takeaway? From this experience, seeing it up close of him chasing 70? I mean, it's pretty special. I think, you know, when you're in the moment, it's kind of hard to grasp. And maybe looking back on it, it's kind of crazy someone going for 70 goals. And um, I hope he gets it. You know, it's looking like he will. And I mean, I don't even know when the last time someone got 70 goals. Um, so him to do it in this modern day and age, it's pretty amazing. So I'm looking forward to hopefully him accomplishing that. 92 93. Really? Who yeah. Was? Kane was Solani, yeah. And Alex rookie year? No, no. Yes, yeah, Solani's yeah. rookie year. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you, it wasn't 70 goals, but what, what did you have, 55 and, like, 49 in the OHL? Do you remember, like, what it was like, <laughs> yeah. how, what it feels like as a goal scorer when it's going in like that? Uh, it feels great. Obviously, yeah. when you're playing junior, it's just automatic like that. Here, it's a different level, though. It's hard to – I won't be scoring 55 and 40-something games here. So, um, you definitely appreciate the goals more often in this league than that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, when, when you're in junior, you know, it was fun. Did you know you were offside on that goal the other night? I had a feeling, yeah. but uh, I just – Get so much anxiety when you hear a coach's challenge, especially here, coach's challenge in this league. It's pretty much a no goal. So, um, yeah, it was unfortunate. I need to get get one more for my line mates there. Yeah, Isn't do you that feel remarkable it? That, that, just like you say, I, I feel the same way. So if they're calling it, it's offside or yeah. whatever. Is it remarkable what the big teams can do in this league? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I wasn't appreciative of that time. Right. But uh, <laughs> this team I mean, is, for I mean, we've yeah. had really good coach's challenge from our guys. Um, you know, our guys in the back, the people don't see, they make a lot of. Good decisions for us, so I'm oh, happy about that. I wasn't happy about the other team doing it to me on the other <laughs> night, but it is what it is. What's your sense of William right now? He's gone eight games without scoring, longest yeah. drive of the season. He said a little frustrated, yeah. but he's trying to laugh it off. What's what's your sense? Yeah, of obviously, I mean Willie's. I mean he's known for his production and everything, and um, obviously that's what big money's for for him is to produce. And I mean, I mean every player goes through times like this. I'm I'm sure he's not the first time he's been through this. So uh, I think for me, it's just. Uh, play the game and hopefully, you know, get him back on the score sheet. And, and that's why I felt bad the other day of the goal being called off. But it is what it is. I mean, he's having a great season. So um, it's just a little tough patch in the road. And I'm sure he'll clean that up real quick and be really good for us in the playoffs. Sorry, uh, Matt Murray is getting sent to uh, the Marlies on a conditioning stint. Don't know if you know that, but you mm-hmm. tweet that out. Didn't know about his commitment to coming back that he's doing everything that he's doing yeah he's been working extremely hard um it's it's a long road back uh, uh when you go through what he went through um but he's been at the rink every day i've been there he's been there uh and then when we're on the road he's there he's been putting in a lot of time um you know lots of hard work um so to see him back on the ice with us at practice was great and for him to uh hopefully get some game action i mean that's that's pretty cool that takes a lot of hard work um so good for him. What have you seen from uh, Timothy Wilgren's development this year? You know, he's dealt with a lot of injuries. Yeah. Like just as he reaches his point here. It's, it's been great. I think, um, I mean, this uh, this previous stretch when uh, uh, prior to his injury, I thought he was playing outstanding. Um, I think you could just tell with him when he's making plays and skating and, um, you know, he has that confidence about him. He, he's, he, he's extremely dangerous. And, um, I mean, I think he's – He's really grown a lot, so when he's on top of his game, um, uh, you know, he's a great player for us. How do you feel your games complement each other? Ah, uh, well, I think, um, you know, I think uh, I mean, we talked about it yesterday, just about trying to help each other, help support one another. Um, I think he's a great skater and a great passer, and I think offensively, um, 
I think we'll be fine. Then it's just about having good gaps and taking away time and space defensively and uh, just making sure we're taking care of that part of the ice. I don't know if you look at the standings at all, but it's still kind of up for grabs mm-hmm. where you'll finish or who you'll play mm-hmm. in the first round. Does, do you look at that at all? Does it matter to you at this point? Um, I do look, but I, I don't think it matters. I think I think either way you're going to have to play a good team. And uh, I think this time of year it's more important that we kind of focus on, on, on ourselves and what we can do rather than looking at the standings. Your coach said the other day he doesn't care about You want to win every game, but he doesn't really care about home ice advantage and let the chips fall where they play. Mm-hmm. How confident are you guys as a road team? You set a record this year. So. Yeah, I, I think I think we feel good on the road. Um, uh, but again, I, I don't. I don't think any of that stuff really matters. I think it's it's up to us. And I think either way, you gotta you know win games at home. You gotta win games on the road. You gotta beat good teams. Um, so you know whoever we get in the first round, and I mean whatever that matchup looks like, um, it's it, it's up to us to get our game in order and get ourselves in a position that we feel good about. You know where our game's at, and then uh, we'll take it from there, just one game at a time. Do you think Austin gets the seventy tonight? <laughs> uh, I, I'm not saying anything. Some of the things you do want to work on between now and, and the playoffs. That you I think. I think. I mean, you just want to tighten everything up. You want to tighten up your your um, your special teams. Um, you know, your breakouts as D, uh, your gaps and stuff like that. And then uh, I think you just want to be feeling good. So you just want to do whatever you got to do as an individual to get your game in a place where you feel good. And then as a team, you just want to make sure everything's dialed. You you understand everything. And again, just special teams and. Um, all the things that kind of come down to just uh, structure and uh, uh, kind of, you know, team mentality. What do you say about what uh, Patrick Kane has done coming back this season and what do you see as the challenge when you're facing him? Yeah, I mean, he's, a, I mean, obviously a great player. Um, and I think when you watch him play now, um, you know, he looks healthy and he looks confident and he's out there doing his thing. So, you know, when he's on the ice, we've got to be aware, um, obviously, um, you know, great skill. He's playing with good players. So, uh, I mean, great vision, great passer. So, um, you know, always challenging to play against him. Red Wings are fighting for their lives. A good time to face them. Would mm-hmm. like be like a playoff atmosphere yeah. for them anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be intense. Um, and I think that's what you want this time of year. Um, so they'll be competing. And, you know, I expect us to be prepared and be ready. Um, you know, we want to win here at home. And, uh, you know, again, get that, you know, good feeling going, that confidence going, going into the playoffs. What was it like seeing Rodion's family here the other night, especially when you and Mitch were the guys who held up his jersey for the it was, draft? Yeah, it was special. Um, obviously, they've been through a lot. Um, so to have them in the building, to have them in Toronto, I think is great. Um, you know, I think having him around uh, here also helps players kind of, uh, you know, be a little closer to that situation. Um, so, you know, I think it's been a good couple of days. And, um, I mean, um, you know, I think the team's just trying to make this uh, – you know, a good trip to Toronto for them, and you know the players want to contribute to that. How is uh, Max and his status for tonight? Max is in tonight. In? In, in. yeah. Any other lineup changes for the night? Um, Revo's in. I can't even remember what the lineup was. Uh, Revo's in tonight. Ed- Edmondson's going to be out tonight. What happened to, to Joel? Did he aggravate anything? Or? Uh, nothing to do with this previous injury. Um, just something's, something's popped up that we're being overly cautious with at this point. But uh, he's still skated today, as you saw. So um, nothing we're too concerned about. But just everything considered, we, we'll give him tonight off. Lilligren? Lilligren will go to Nate. What, do you want, what are you intrigued by with him and, and Morgan being paired together at practice? Yesterday? Uh, uh, well, they, they, all season long, they've been playing together, even when not playing together at different times, right? So it's just more about getting the reps. They will not be paired together tonight in the game. So, um, you yeah, know, but, but even though not paired tonight together, they're still, they'll still get shifts together. They're playing all zone starts together. So, you know, we, we haven't really done it so much through practicing and, and such, but uh, we have been doing it pretty consistently in games when Lilligan was healthy. Um, so it was... You know, as much about that, and we didn't put a whole lot of thought yesterday into the the pairs as it related specifically to, to, to today, but looking more bigger picture. Matt Murray, obviously, with the Marlies on a conditioning stint, can you talk about what he has gone through and, and what it means for him to come all the way back like he has? Yeah, it's been it's been tremendous how he's gone about things, and you know, it's been very much on the periphery, but. Um, you know, he, he, you, you see him in there every day. You see him working, and because it's often, uh, especially for most of the season, it's often by himself, and it's often 
odd hours when there's not a lot of people around. And so, you, you know, you see him doing this thing and you, you have a good appreciation for how long a road it's been, but also the mindset that he's maintained all the way, all the way through, uh, you know, which is to do everything that he can to, to be, to be ready uh, um, and give himself an opportunity to, to, you know, get in the net this season. Um, so just the fact that he's going to go down and play in the American league, I think is a tremendous story. And, uh, again, a credit to him and his approach uh, as a pro, but uh, you know, obviously, you know it's it's uh, it's a distant thing from what we're doing here. Um, but but it, as an independent thing for him, it's it's been uh, it's been cool to watch and not surprising about it because she's he's a pro. There's no doubt about that. And um, credit to him, and I hope he goes down and you know has some fun and stops some pucks. Not necessarily pertaining to Matt, but teams have used multiple goalies in playoffs. You look at Vegas last year, for example. Uh, happen, right? There's no shortage of those uh, of those situations. Yeah, without a doubt. So, you know, we, that's why the goaltending depth is important. We've kept Jones around here for the very same reason. Uh, you know, uh, that's all important stuff. I mean, Matt himself has got a couple Stanley Cups as being the guy who didn't start in the playoffs. So, um, yeah, you, you've got all sorts of these stories over. Over time, you never know, um, you know what, what comes about. But uh, like I said, far from what our focus is here right now. Well, you've got a couple of hockey players at home. What, what do you tell them, or what have you told? Or what will you tell them about Austin and sort of how he's gone about this and the lessons of a player on a ride like this? Oh, I, I'm not so sure that my kids could ever relate to to what uh, someone like Austin's going through or or many kids could, but I do know it, it's something that's, you know, it's exciting. People are talking about it. I, you know, I'm, I'm out and about and in the rinks and, and, and stuff with my kids. And, and even yesterday it was, and, uh, it had uh, probably a, a dozen 10 year olds, uh, runner up to me asking how many Austin's going to get. Like it's, everybody's excited about that. Um, <clears throat> so I think it's, it's definitely a thing. I think I referenced it the other night that there's a lot of, young Leaf fans, uh, some much older than 10, but still uh, through their lifetime have not seen something like this uh, in, in the NHL. So I get uh, the hype and everything around it, and it, it is uh, certainly fun. Um, from my perspective, the more uh, I, I get more of a thrill of just watching Austin play um, and where his game is at and, and all of that and wherever the number gets to, I'm not concerned about I've never been concerned about it. I'm not even convinced he's concerned about it. I think it's already, that's where it sits right now, is a pretty tremendous accomplishment. Uh, like I said, that many uh, in their life have not seen. Um, you know, we'll see what the rest of the season brings starting here tonight. But, uh, you know, the most important thing for me is this game is in, is in good order and, and he's, he's uh, generated just terrific chemistry uh, with Max and Bert and, and uh, it's given us so many more options as a result. So that's what's really come out of this for me. Um, just a question about your approach. Do you sort of have a picture of what your playoff lineup is going to look like, or do you wait till game 82, after game 82, and who your opponent is before you put that together? Yeah, I have a picture of it. I have for, you know, for quite some time now, uh, quite honestly. But you don't, to your, to your point about 82, you don't have all the information until game 82. Health, opponent, you know, uh, all of those ty types of things. So, you, you know, you never really finalize anything. That's why it's important to, to still have an eye towards, well, you have a, a sense of what you're going to look like and what you want to have, and you're working towards that. But if one or two things, you know, for, for right now, for us, it's your Croc self. Like, it's like, where's that? That's a factor here. How does that, uh, how does that affect the group? Uh, and if he's in, how would we use him? And if he's not in, what's the results? And so you're trying to manage these kind of things at this, at this part of the year. Um, obviously, the way things have come together here with, with Austin and, and Max and Bert, like that's, that's, a, that's a real thing. This is not just a short-term thing. Like that, that's, a, that's a real thing that gives our, our team a, a completely different look. And, uh, that, you know, we, we've been wanting to give that time. And you look at other things... You know, for me, you're trying to balance getting chemistry and continuity and all of that, which on one side is important, but just how important is it? Because the reality is for this team, the team that I coach here, 
Um, and not to say that this is the way it works for everybody else, but for this team, anytime we've had disruptions or change, uh, this group has responded positively and gotten even better. I mean, we're talking about Austin Matthews, the type of year he's had. You know, we lost Austin unexpectedly for a game and had to kind of throw together some lines in, against Pittsburgh and might maybe play our best game of the entire season. Like, these are the kind of things that I think uh, are, is exciting about our group is, is it, there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of uh, versatility and, and different people that can do different things and the skill set of the group and whether it's guys that are being in game one or some of the guys that are out. Like we've got some, some good options that have all performed very well. And we'll use 82 to sort it out, but uh, I think what you've seen of late is, is a sense of how we see it going forward. Is there a uh, is there a Cade Weber plan in the works here, Sultan, over the weekend? Uh, I, I, I know some of that stuff's been out there. I haven't had – that hasn't come across – uh, my desk here now in terms of what that looks like or, you know, what the potential of that is. I don't even know if anything's finalized at this point. Uh, so it's not on my radar at this point.